Hi, uh, my name is Ken Sido. I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of Massive Damage. Uh, we're an indie studio from Toronto. We've been around since uh, 2010. Um, and we're working on Star Renegades. Yeah. Our last game was uh, Halcyon 6. Okay. Um, could you give us an overview of what the game is about? Yeah, so Star Renegades kind of came about, um, we wanted to basically create a very, uh, I guess, distilled, uh, modernized JRPG experience, but using a lot of um, you know, modern gameplay, uh, maybe a little bit crib from like roguelikes, but not super punishing like what people kind of think about when they think about roguelikes. So we came up with a system where it, uh, the game takes place over generations and um, so there's a lot of permanence uh, that's within the uh, the robo base upgrades that you do and the unlocks that you um, that you get from spending your uh, um, progress points and stuff. Um, but the actual runs themselves, I guess we call it, uh, they only need to be about anywhere from say an hour to three hours, depending on what you're attempting to do. So you can get like a very uh, fulfilling, this uh, compact, I guess, JRPG experience. And how large, how large is the team on this one and how far into development is it? Uh, we're 10 people and we're kind of just in the midst of uh, tuning up our, our alpha. We're uh, set to launch uh, by August next year. And uh, what platforms are you looking to release on? Uh, as many as we can get. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, um, I would say, we're part of the Game Pass, so for sure it's, it's going to be Windows 10, PC, Steam, uh, and um, Xbox for sure, but uh, we're also targeting you know, PS4 and Switch as well. And um, what's one thing that you would like uh, players to take away when they see or play the game? Uh, well, we worked very hard on our visuals and presentation, so we, we um, uh, spent a lot of time creating this interesting 2.5D presentation with our uh, pixel art. A lot of our pixel art is also, um, it's, it's all hand drawn. So some of our characters that you see uh, here, they, they have over 500 frames of hand drawn uh, pixel art animation. Um, it's almost like fighting game uh, amount of animation for some of these characters. And coming off of Halcyon and, and moving in, what was it like moving into this 2.5D space, uh, mixing that sort of 3D with the with the sprites that you guys have worked on in the past? Uh, I wasn't directly involved in the technical aspects of it, so I can't really speak to that. But uh, we wanted to uh, basically take our, our uh, art direction uh, to a level that that would draw attention. So we had we had very nice 2D uh, Pixar art uh, style before, but you know it, it was just like well you know we can we can take five months and um, kind of come up with our version of what we liked about the, the presentation that we saw say like in um, Octopath Traveler and uh, inspired a little bit by say the trailer for The Last Night which uh, you know I, I guess it's just a trailer right now but there's some really cool stuff they were doing there with lighting and shadows and uh, pixel art and, and 3D and so we were inspired by that but then kind of taking it to our, our own style. With uh, with Halcyon it was more of sort of like uh, you had a lot of resource management in that one. Um, this one seems more uh, almost action focused. A little bit of strategy but more action focused. Um, and then, of course, you've got Dark Knight, which is more seemingly narrative-focused. Mm -hmm. um, what has it been like for the team to sort of expand into all these different genres? Yeah, so the gameplay here is going to have uh, a lot, uh, some old-world exploration and uh, interaction with, uh, throughout the missions and quests that you take. The combat itself, it looks like action, but it's actually uh, a turn-based uh, combat system um, similar to uh, somewhere in between Grandy and Chrono Trigger. It's kind of where we landed um, and we're still fine-tuning it now we're trying to make the combat uh, really kind of punchy so it, it does have that uh, impactful kind of hits uh, and that's on purpose like we you know um, I think part of that goal of trying to distill a really compact but exciting JRPG experience was to not ask the player have to to have to play like 60 hours at a time remembering you know uh, where they are in this very long game um, is also trying to 
create a much more exciting combat uh, rather than the typical just attack, attack, attack until the hit points are gone. So we've taken um, some liberties on, on uh, improvements on, on turn-based combat. You mentioned that there was a, 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 a certain level of, uh, of randomness here and, mm. and, and the choices that the player makes through the game. Is there a core experience uh, to, to Star Renegade or will it be sort of a different adventure every time? Um, there's an overarching storyline of a rebellion that takes place over uh, a very, very long period of time. And each time you start the game, uh, when you pick a squad and you go forth and, and uh, pick something from the selection of missions uh, that occur on different planets, the planets themselves, they're all set, they're not random, but they do have a lot of different areas on each planet. So. Um, it's unlikely you'll be seeing the same areas uh, often, but even then, if it was the exact same area, the storylines we, we create with our mission director, um, they will change the content in those areas so that even if you are on the same area of the map where you see this lake and the city, uh, what you're doing there and the units that you encounter and the other events that you might encounter will be procedurally generated, um, so it won't, it won't be the same. If you become invested in a team, but that team dies, is that it for them, or is there any way to like keep a team that you particularly enjoyed? Uh, yeah, there's no it's there's no permadeath or anything like that. Like the there's one uh, mechanic that we have that is um, sort of like a permadeath, but it's more in the sense that if one of your characters dies, and on the enemy side they have a character that has a um, a capture ability. Um, and you fail to prevent that from happening, you could potentially end up having that character uh, get captured by the enemy. We have we have a, a something like the Nemesis system, but, but not you know a, a AAA level kind of Nemesis system. But it does have an enemy hierarchy, hierarchy with personalities, and. You, there is a potential for one of your characters to um, get recruited or captured and then turned into a, an enemy that you won't be able to use them until you meet them again and, and defeat them and bring them back to uh, the rebel side. That's intense. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's, that's, the only, that's the only reason, I, that's the only way I would say that there is some permadeath, but not in the way that you would expect. So you can keep using the same squad over and over as long as nobody's been captured and uh, yeah. And how can people learn more about Star Renegade? Uh, they can just go to StarRenegades.com. We have uh, also a very active uh, Twitter, uh, so twitter.com slash Star Renegades. And we have a Discord channel, uh, Massive Damage Inc.